get people to do a plan for their family. Get the, get the template out, go through it, sit down as a whole family. Don't just do it mum and dad, it's got to be the kids. Got to be the kids because they're part of it. But guess what, they forget one thing, our pets. Whether you're on a, you know, and it makes it harder when you're on a farm, all your, all your farm animals are your pets because you look after them. But when you're in an area like the area that's been burnt this time, there's heaps and heaps of animals that have been lost unfortunately. And, it's, and it is because the fire was so ferocious and it got there very quick, people didn't have time to move. But you, we've got to start thinking about getting things done for animals. You know, I go through a few of the animals like horses. Very, very spooky. You just can't go out and grab them and ra race them into a horse flight. You might not even have a horse flight. You might have to organise a horse flight. Everyone's going to be thinking the same thing. Oh, we're going to need a horse flight today, but are you going to try and get one? Everyone's got them. So we need to be, pre be preparing early, and I mean weeks early, of what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, where we're going to put them, and who's going to look after them. And that goes for, we might have the odd potty calf, our sheep, our packers, the whole lot. Then we get to our little ones around our, our immediate house that are with us all the time. Dogs and cats, budgies, goldfish. Um, what was the other I was just thinking of? Lizards, snakes. Not sure I want to be going to a rescue centre with a, with a snake in it coming out of a bag, but anyway. Um, it's all the little bits. Even our pet chooks. You know, we always, always all have a few chooks in our yard laying a few fresh eggs for us. We've got to think of all those. Now, it's not a five minute job. So we need to be, when we've got our plan, we need to sitting down, sitting down saying, right, okay, what pets have we got? We need to have boxes for them. We need to have a plan of where we're going to take them and what we're going to do with them. Because they've got to have their water and their feed and everything. And that's not a five minute job. We just can't leave them there. Sometimes in this fire that's happened, there are some pets that have been lost. And you know, some of the kids are really disappointed that it's happened. But as I say, say to the kids, yes, you've lost your pets. We can replace them. I know they're not exactly the same as what you've had, but we can replace them. Think about that. Yeah, but it's not the same. But I say, yes, it is the same because we've still got you. We can't replace you. You might have lost a pet, but we haven't lost you. So I get them thinking in, the, in, the, in that type of zone that, you know, yes, they've lost their pet, but we can replace it, even though it's not the same. Right, this one up now, um, it's showing the horses. There is a template which uh, is very similar to our leaving early one. It's a template for horses. And it goes through a list of the whole lot of information you need. Where you can do, where you can leave them, like this, this time the, will the Shire open up the Shire Yards down here in Bansdale for, the, uh, for a lot of horses and stuff to come in, which was good. Um, I know there's some loads of cattle that came in too, but everyone can't do that. You know, if you get caught, like up at, um, look up at the Tambo Crossing in, say, Swifts Creek, Omeo area, the fire's cross the road, the road's closed, so what do you do? You've got to find an alternative. And that's where you've got to be thinking ahead and people, I'm hoping people now after these fires have gone through are already thinking ahead of if it happens again, what can we do? What can we do better? How are you going to keep them safe? Same way we keep ourselves safe. You need some ideas to keep them safe. Chooks for instance, you might be able to get some little cages and put them in their cages, make sure they've got water in it. At least you can put them in the vehicle and get out there out quick if you have to. But as I keep on saying, you need to be looking ahead. Look what the forecasts are going to be. You know, our weather doesn't just happen like that. You get a lead up of warmer days from low 20s, they keeps on going higher and higher and higher until we get a total fire band day, which is in the high 30s to low 40s. We know that's going to happen. That happens over about a week. So really there's no excuse for saying, oh, I haven't had time to do anything for the pets. You know, we never give them a thought. You need a trigger point, especially with our fire ready sign, our, our, our um, sign our, with the dial on it for our low to medium, high, 
very high. You need a trigger point on that to do something with your animals and yourselves, but in particular animals. And your animals take time. As I said before, your animals take time. It's fine, you can have your car packed with your kids ready to go, but don't forget, you've got a couple of horses, you've got a couple of calves, sheep, chooks, everything else. Where are you going to put them and how are you going to get them where and when? So you need to uh, think about all of that. It takes time to do. And a little note here, which is up there too, it says, do your animals influence your trigger point to enact your plan? Well, I hope they do because they should. I'd like to know what trigger point you have for enacting your plan for your family. It should be the same as your animals. Again, you've got to get transport for them. How long does it take to load them? Yeah, a couple of cantankerous horses or cows or whatever running around the paddock because they've been spooked by the fire and the smoke. They don't like it. So you've got to work out where you're going to put them and how you're going to do it so that nobody gets injured. So there's some options for you to keep your smaller animals safer. Um, take your pets with you to uh, best confine them early if, if you're going to. And uh, what's the safest place to have them? What sort of carriers do, can you get? Um, and that's again, you know, don't just leave it till the last minute because everyone's going to be thinking in the same zone. Oh, but you're going to grab a cage for the cat. Race down to the local place to get a cat cage. Oh, no, we sold that at them yesterday or the day before. You got to think about it through the year and get your, organ, get your stuff organised so that it all falls into place. Pack an emergency kit for your pets. Same as what you need for us. You need feed and water for them. We need feed and water. And as I said, that other bag, you need all your other bits and pieces in your bag also. Have a bit of a practice at it. People laugh when I say that, practice it. What do we want to practice it for? Well, see how long it takes to get your horses or your cattle or whatever into a trailer. You know, is it going to take 10 minutes? Is it going to take 10 hours? Who knows? If you do it on a calm day and you get the animals used to doing it, do it a few times before the fire season, you might have a better chance it's going to be quicker because they'll be used to doing it. Sounds like a waste of time, but if you want to save your pets, good thing to do. The other thing is with pets, you know, people think about when, when you mention all the, all the different pets, you know, like the snakes and the, and the lizards and the, and the goldfish and that that I mentioned, they really forget about those. They're in the house, forgotten all about it. How are we going to carry them? Somebody said, oh, a plastic bag. Well, that's fine until the plastic bag pops. And they have a fish floating around in the car. And the cat will be chasing it. With horses in particular, if you are in trouble, I know a fire doesn't always start a long way from you. You, you know, sometimes you might have four or five hours before a fire is going to impact. At least you've got a chance to do something. Sometimes a fire might start right next to your property. So you've got to act straight away. Now in the summer season when that happens, or in any time of the year basically, if you've got some paddocks or some areas that are fairly clear, not much in them, eaten out, good place to put them, drive them into there. If you've got a few paddocks that are cleaned out, leave the gates open in between them. But on, under no circumstances, leave any exterior gates open out onto roads or other paddocks that they can get out onto roads in. Because if people are trying to vacate the area and fire trucks are trying to come in, we don't want to be running into animals on the road. It's the last thing we need, okay? To have, have somebody hurt by, by an animal running wild on the road because it's frightened of the fires. So please try and make it that it's, you, know, you can c contain them in your area that's clear or a green paddock if you've got one, but don't let them out onto the roads. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, we'll just open the gates and let them go. No, please don't. If you've got to leave the animals, make sure they've always got plenty of water. Okay, make sure they've got plenty of water. Uh, don't lock them in, 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 in buildings, in the stables and that. Leave them run free. There's a good chance they'll avoid the fire by doing that. All right. 
All right. Well, I think that's pretty close to all we can do on that. Uh, as I said, you know, just plan ahead. Um, and, you know, even though this year people might think that even though they've left their animals, some of them, they've got to be checked by a vet after the fire's gone through because a lot of their hooves get very soft and burn.